2023 is finally over and a lot of stuff happened this year. Welcome to the good, the bad, and the ugly of 2023. You know, a lot of things happened in 2023. One of them being, you know, the Zack Snyder's DC Universe is is finally done. Guys, you're not going to get... Thank God a netflix version of that and there's 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 a simple reason for that there's a legality behind that netflix could they afford it probably um would it be profitable for warner brothers to license it off yeah probably but it doesn't make any sense for them to do that because yeah, no, you no. know jay's james gunn's starting his own dc universe and he can't have another one rival his it just doesn't it's not financially smart to do that so i think it really is done um, i hope so i mean i know netflix wants it as you said mm. but i mean even after just rebel moon which is arguably one of the worst movies of the year even yeah, though we'll zach's s- their golden boy that's... well he was their golden boy before all of that we'll, we'll yeah, see so... look i'm a, I'm a zach snyder fan i think the guy's great i think he's a talented director and there are movies that he has done that i really really enjoy one of them being 300 i i still i'll die on this hill you know zach snyder's justice league is my favorite comic book movie it is my favorite movie of 2021 to date um it's a good movie I just but, saw it actually this last weekend. <laughs> but there there are flaws to some of his styles, you know. DCU, his version of it, was plagued with so much crap that we've gone over on this channel numerous times. I wish the guy the best of luck. Um, I, I really enjoyed Henry Cavill as Superman. It's just, I think it's time for new blood. I think it's time, and hopefully, as we've said before, Warner Brothers has learned from their mistakes and you know, moving forward, they don't give their directors this much crap. They don't go and get Jeff Johns to get Academy Award winning screenwriters shit and have them rewrite <laughs> their script or, you know, just whoever is in the suits. Relax. You know, I've said a lot of things about James Gunn. It's just I don't like the way he hops on social media and attacks people and, and like says certain things they they don't pay off or how he's handled the press in general but he's a great director he's done comic book movies very well gardens of the galaxy 3 was one of the best things that came out this year so willing to give the guy a shot if the movie sucks we'll say it um but yeah dc used the, the snyder versus is, is is all but done and also you can tell that jason momoa just couldn't care less he's yeah. he's ready for whatever's coming and Admittedly, them, so he's he's had some conversations with with James Gunn. To give Warner Brothers credit, though, one thing that has been good about their DC is that they were able to turn not great actors into household names and make great movies with them. I mean, we've said it before. Jason Momoa is he plays one character, but he's good at that one character. But that's about all he does. And he was great yeah, as Aquaman. Yeah, Gal Gadot. I know a lot of you disagree, but. She's not a great actress. She's been in. I don't. The only good movie see, she's been in is Wonder Woman one. On that's that, just impressive. I don't know if if it's if it's her or if it's the material she's now given. Given <sighs> she takes it, she she goes with it. But also, you you got to remember, and I've said this numerous times. George Clooney was an absolute shit Batman. Yeah. And he's been in some shit movies, a lot actually. But he's not a bad actor. George Clooney's actually a very good actor. He's just, I don't know. Even Colin Farrell mentioned this one, and and because I sadly do own the uh, Daredevil Blu-ray, he said, "Sometimes you just take it for the paycheck, man." And yeah, you know, sometimes um, paycheck is good. the The script might be bad, but you know. So I don't know. I'm not saying she's the she's Natalie Portman level actress. She's she's clearly not. Um, I do want to see her challenge, though. I want to see her in some other roles. I was interesting, uh, interested in her Cleopatra. I don't think that's happening anymore with Patty <laughs> Jenkins. Um, but yeah, I was I mean, interested to see what she could bring to... Now, I would have been the first one to say, if her acting chops in that movie sucked, I would have been like, yeah, no, nah, she's she's just not... She's cute. Honestly, I, th- I think you're right. I mean, the movie she's been in, Fast and the Furious, uh, yeah. she was, was Red Notice with The Rock and... And Ryan and Reynolds just came and went. 
Yeah, I mean, she plays a lot of similar characters. She's being typecast, but you're right. She can challenge herself. But then the question is, I know you've seen this, and I haven't. <clears throat> was she good in uh, Death on the Nile? Because that's probably a movie she wasn't necessarily as typecast in. So, like, how was her acting in that? Was that something that could have challenged her and she just didn't rise to it? Or you is know, that just a flaw? That cast is sa- solid, as those movies most of their casts are solid. She wasn't as bad as she was in other things in that particular movie, but I think it's just based on the way it was written. I mean, yeah, it's um, Brana. So, but well, the good news is she is young, so she can definitely grow and still have. She still has a lot of things to learn. Given sadly the time of like the age limit of women in Hollywood is still a thing, which is a little bit sad. So hopefully she's able to get it quickly and she's able to get more roles. But I mean, she's back in fast and furious, but that's definitely not going to challenge her. Yeah, that's not, that's not a smart career. I mean, again, the pay is I, I, I going to yeah. pay well. I mean, even though that movie was terrible, it's still made upwards of 700 million this year. You know, if I were her agent, I'd get her more challenging shit. And, and definitely why not? I mean, it's, it's there's no like wrong thing about it. Maybe, maybe dive into some acting lessons. Maybe, maybe yeah, go to you can always improve. Maybe do some, yeah, you could always improve your craft, you know, learn or, or do some acting with some really talented people and learn from them. You know, if I were an actor, one of the things I'd want to do is I'd, I'd want to make a movie with, you know, Robert De Niro, Sir Ian McKellen, Patrick Stewart with these, these type of dudes who are so, so talented. Yeah. And if you're in a movie with these people and you don't learn from them, that's sad. You know, Emma, like even just being of, in the same room, you would learn from them. Yeah, one of the things that Emma Watson said that she really she loved working on Beauty and the Beast was because she was with these people that she could just learn so much from. You know? Yeah. It, it, it improves you. It, you're who you hang with kind of determines, you know, and who then, you are. And I guess yeah. just further going into my point, hanging out with The Rock, Ryan Reynolds, all people yeah. that have just been playing one role. Then cast of DC, Henry Cavill being Henry Henry Cavill and Ben Affleck being the exception, not amazing actors she's worked with. So no, may, maybe you're right. I guess just try to get more roles. Like Cleopatra probably would have been one that helped, but she still has that experience. Maybe on her next role, using what she learned, she may be able to help her. You know Henry Cavill, he's he's grown. He I can't I can't believe he was the little, well not the little kid, but he was he was a scrawny um, kid from the count of monte cristo and now he's <laughs> you know superman he's he's the gone Witcher. to yeah he's gone on so to play much. all these other roles but you know he's it, one of my favorite just, actors i love henry cavill hands down zach is done with dc i don't know if he's going to be doing superhero I, I probably don't think so not for i a hope while. he doesn't i know he mentioned i don't want him and, to. and griff and i had a long discussion about this i know he mentioned he wanted to do he'd love to do daredevil I don't want him anywhere near Daredevil. And let me explain that. So I do think he's a great and very talented director. His visual stuff is is awesome, although I'm not a fan of his, and nor have I ever been, his slow-mo cam. But I don't want him anywhere near Daredevil. I think what no. Netflix was able to do with Daredevil was as gritty and as hardcore as we needed to be. Yeah. Um, And Zach is just known for, you know, a lot of blood and a lot of things like that. And I, I just... I don't I don't need that for for this particular character. So th- for me it's a no. I I think what they're doing it at Netflix what they did, I'm sorry, and what they're doing now with Kevin Feige saying, "You know what?" Cuz essentially he scrapped the whole born again thing. He was like, mm, "I saw four episodes. It's not where I wanted to go. Thankfully. Let's recalibrate." And I'm glad because that's one of the, the best things that that's happened out, this year was just redoing that show. It's I, I would the rather rumors wait. that came out of it was ridiculous. I would rather wait and have them get it right. And you know, by his own words, Kevin Feige was like, "Look, it's not as good as the Netflix show, and I need it to be as good or better." I like that standard. Yeah, you know, because that is that's a high bar that Netflix set. And so, if Kevin Feige's whole thing is let's make it as good or better. I'm I'm with that, and if honestly, we have to wait till 2025, I'm I'm okay with that. I'll even wait to 2026. But honestly, the changes they made to the show is mind blowing. I mean, they had an actor from Arrow, not an actor, sorry, a writer from Arrow who was writing most of the show, and it was like season seven Arrow. It was the pilot for the Green Arrow and 
uh, the Canary spinoff. <clears throat> and if you guys saw that episode, it was terrible. Most of the last few seasons of Arrow is terrible. And that was your main writer. And that's pretty much all they've done. So that's just, that's not a good look. So then firing everyone and getting the showrunner from Punisher, fantastic. That's such yeah, a and also great move. They mentioned that it was more of a legal drama more like law and order and things like that suits and you know what i mean yes daredevil is a lawyer and you know matt murdoch and we, and we want to see that stuff and those scenes are great but, but it's not more it than can't 10 center around just that you know he yeah. didn't wear his uniform his his uniform his suit until i think it was seasons i mean episode, episode six four. so I'm glad they they went back and they changed that. We saw a glimpse of him in one of my most anticipated projects of this year, which is Echo. That that show looks. Yeah. I can't wait for next week. I, I'm yeah, telling you, one right week now. from today, because it really is going to give us more of an idea. Because it's still out there. A lot of you know people like John Campion are like, no, 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 it's not connected. No, it's it's a reboot. It's a you know Daredevil Born Again has nothing to do with the Netflix show. We sat through She Hulk. When he appears, it's the, it's the Netflix theme. Kevin Feige has said that the actors have said if too. it's not it's not a season four, but it is, you know, very very connected to what we saw. Here, we're gonna get our first glimpse of just how connected it is because Kingpin's in this. Yeah, he's heavily in this, so. It's it's going to show us our first glimpse of just how connected this this really is, and then there's. I mean, a, not to mention a... from the Hawkeye show when when yeah. Kingpin showed up. That's the same iteration of Kingpin, and it was pretty clear of that. Besides the attire, it was it was a very similar character. So I I don't understand the argument of how it's not connected, despite at every turn it's been confirmed by everyone, the current projects, past projects. Yeah. I. I'm I mean, Charlie Cox is in it. And yeah. Vincent D'Onofrio. And Given one of the things who I'm knows more they're going to bring for. in like the other defenders and say if that's canon or not, because there's still speculation about that, in particular with Iron Fist and Luke Cage. But we'll yeah. see. Well, I mean, um, Jessica Jones has been spotted around, so true. She will more than likely be in, well, at least yeah. was in the previous iteration of Born Again. I'm excited. I'm also very excited because of the rumors uh, around Spider-Man Four, which are that it's going to be very ground leveled like street leveled movie as opposed to him fighting i don't know some kind of fucking octopus from outer space <laughs> and that charlie cox matt murdoch aka daredevil is heavily going to be involved in it um also ant-man but you know i'm more inclined to care for for daredevil um but also f- because of what they're building up to the, which says uh, uh, apparently echo and Daredevil Born Again are going to connect directly to Spider-Man 4 where be cool. you know, Kingpin takes on as mayor and he just goes all out against vigilantes. If that's true, I can't wait for that because I, I, I've been desperately wanting to see Daredevil team up with Spider-Man to take on Kingpin. Same here. Kingpin that would be a lot of fun. I don't know. It's something we've been wanting since 2014 since Daredevil came out. I don't know if that's what they're going to do. I do think they're going to need to involve the Venom symbiote in some way, but we'll see. I think that'll be interesting. I haven't actually read those rumors. I've just seen like a lot of things where it is in development, but who yeah. knows? It's I mean, right now that, that could right all now. change, but yeah, from what they're building up, and you know, from set pictures of Bo- what they did film from Born Again, um, they are building up to this whole Kingpin majorial campaign and. You know him taking on as a city, and that's a pretty sweet comic book arc where he actually oh, yeah. becomes mayor of New York, and he goes ape shit on you know uh, vigilantes, of course, by using supervillains, which is which is funny. But but you know maybe now we'll get Scorpion. So I'm yeah. excited. I mean, just anything that has D'Onofrio or Cox in it, and you know their iterations of Kingpin and, and Daredevil, I'm, I'm highly excited for. So hopefully, and it's been confirmation all of these shows. Echo, Daredevil, Born Again, um, they're all going to be, you know, a, a very mature rating, which is yeah, which is great. And I think do do having those mature ratings is essential for these characters. I mean, Punisher without a mature rating is that's that's not really yeah, you don't Punisher. Want to yeah, it could be it. done, but it's it's not going to be as good as it can be. So I'm glad Disney and Marvel are taking this step to do more mature content, more R ratings. 
because sometimes despite the general stigmatism that superheroes are for kids not all of them are nor they sh- nor should they be yeah they can appear in like puncher can appear in spider-man that doesn't necessarily that's not going to make it rated r right out the bat that's fine yeah. but a centered show that's when these characters shine best and they're dark nitty-gritty so i think that's gonna be a lot of fun and echo's gonna show us the first glimpse of that with a mature rating hopefully it is as good as kevin feige's been boasting and it lives up to our standards because we have some very high standards despite what we said recently about marvel echo's gonna be held at a even higher pedestal just because of the netflix involvement so we'll see i mean Five episodes at once, it's it's going to go by fast, and hopefully the story keeps us interested, and even just the action from the trailer was very intense and very much what we're looking for. I'm excited. We'll be reviewing it for you guys next week. Yeah. I can't wait. You guys have been patiently waiting. I know a lot of you guys have requested it for us to do the top five of this year. There have been a lot of good things that have come out this year. Surprisingly for me, animation has just been a step above everything else. There's been a lot of fantastic animated projects. And yeah. I think one thing that we necessarily didn't ex- like, we expected it to be good, but not this good was TMNT mutant mayhem. That was a fantastic movie with the great cast and even better visuals and Seth R- Rogen playing a warthog for the second time. But it was, it was a really good movie. It's one I haven't been able to rewatch it, but it's one I desperately want to. I just rewatched it. Yeah, it's it's yeah, pretty good. I'm there jealous. are things that I'm still not super in love with about it, but I think you know, given yeah. the target audience, I think it's it, it's fair. Yeah, I think with me being more of a casual fan, it it checked all the boxes for me, and I I love. It. I really hope we get more into the style of animation, just for like not a style of animation, but an age of animation where it's more of an art form more than it is just CGI uh, animation, like they've been doing. This isn't meant for any shade whatsoever, but we've been doing it like Illumination, where it's just a medium to portray the story instead of the me- medium being an art form itself. And this movie definitely set the bar for it. And one movie that I think surprised a lot of people because it underperformed in the first few weeks, but then absolutely took off later was Elemental. I think I've seen this movie the most times out of any new movie that came out this year. And I, I just really enjoyed it. Again, animation is spectacular. I like the story. I like the characters a lot. And I I think this one was just spectacular. If you haven't seen this on Disney Plus, it's it's a good movie. And I think it surprised both me and Edward with how good it was just after seeing the trailer and the initial box office numbers. And then one movie we didn't review on this channel, but is my third favorite movie of this year is Godzilla Minus One. We can't stress this enough. If you haven't seen the movie yet, go see it. Godzilla Minus One is by far probably the best Godzilla movie in the past 23 years. It's it's Ever. insanely good. Yeah, it's so definitely the better than any of the American-made movies we've had recently. It is very good. They set up a sequel. Hopefully it continues to be this good because it is, it is one of those movies you definitely need to go watch in theaters. It's... It's astounding. <laughs> My second favorite thing of this year was actually a TV show. And it's one that Edward and I were extremely worried about, but every episode was amazing, had some fantastic moments, and that was Ahsoka. Ahsoka was such a good show. I enjoyed seeing Hayden Christensen. The lightsaber fights yeah. were amazing, surprisingly. And honestly, this is a show I definitely want to rewatch. It is it is so much fun to watch, and it's one of my favorite Star Wars projects because of it. I love the characters. I love the dynamics. The humor was great, and I'm really excited to see where it goes. The best thing of the year, probably no surprise if you saw a review for it, is Across the Spider-Verse. Hands down, this really wasn't, wasn't that hard for me to decide. I mean, Into the Spider-Verse is my favorite movie of all time before that I saw Across the Spider-Verse, and that's my new favorite movie of all time. I'm a huge fan of Spider-Man, love the characters, love the animation, love the soundtrack, that everything about it was was perfect. I'm so happy with it. I'm nervous and excited for Beyond the Spider-Verse. It's currently been delayed indefinitely because they they set a bar for themselves and they set a release date that is a little bit too soon. I, I can't wait. I love that movie so much. Yeah. Solid list, man. Okay. I'm going to read off my list of what I think was the best of this year. I'm going to start from, you know, 
number five to number one. Uh, for me, one of the things that we were both really excited for, but also particularly I was really nervous. I, it was uh, Super Mario Brothers, the movie. Super Mario Brothers was either going to be phenomenal or it was going to be a miss. And I'm happy to say that I really enjoyed it. I've seen it with my family oh, yeah. numerous times by now. It was a lot of fun just for all sorts of reasons, just to see the characters on, on the big screen and to see how well the movie did. It did a billion bucks, which guarantees us a sequel. And also, more importantly, Griffin and I, we spoke about this numerous times. We were like, if this movie bombs, we're never going to get a Legend of Zelda movie. So we were cheering this movie on, and it's been announced. We're, we're going to get a Legend of Zelda movie, live action. I just cannot wait. Please don't be Tom Holland. Yeah, and one thing about the Mario movie is the soundtrack of that movie and all the Easter eggs is what particularly made it fr fun for me, and I think fun for a lot of people is just even though there's a lot of nostalgia, it's hidden nostalgia, not something that's really thrown in your face, but it takes you back to your childhood. And it was it was just a fun movie, as Edward said. Yeah, so Across the Spider-Verse at number four for me. You know, not that it makes it anywhere less of a, of a great movie. It's a phenomenal movie, one of the best of the year. Um, it's just where it lands on my list. Um, I had a great time, went to the movies with it, with my kid, and she, she loves it. She loves the first one. I was very late to the first one. I can't <laughs> explain why. Um, can't, even blame, can't even blame COVID for that one. Yeah, no, but but there was no way I was going to be late for this one. And we were there opening day, and it's it's I've seen it twice since. Um, but great, great movie, man. Just the visuals, that the soundtrack, the voice cast. I had a great time. I can't, you know, just praise it enough. I can't wait for the for the next one. But as Griff said, we're on a little bit of hiatus. I'm sure maybe they want to tweak some things, and they're going to take their time with it because they want to top it. As they oh, did yeah, with they this. have to. It's very high bar. At number three for me is Ahsoka. I absolutely, I was very worried as Griff said about this show because this show could have just gone completely wrong and it didn't. Great show, great cast. Best thing about it is we got Hayden Christensen, spoiler alert, um, back as Star as Wars. Anakin. Spoiler alert. We're fine. <laughs> Darth, Darth Vader, phenomenal. I had a great time with it, nostalgia wise and just you know, fan wise, just the visuals, the lightsaber duels, as Griff said, seeing Clone Wars flashback, seeing Anakin with younger Ahsoka. Forget it. Give me more of it. Just yeah. take my money, Disney. And number two for me is a, is a very welcome surprise. We almost we would just would we wouldn't have done it had it not been requested. Mm, yeah. Sound of Freedom. Um, as a, as a parent, I just, I can't recommend this movie enough or just as a human being in general, uh, go watch it. If you haven't seen it, I, you know, it's on Amazon prime. Now you can, you can go check it out. It's a movie about, um, you know, it's intense hu human trafficking. Unfortunately, the subject matter is not easy. It's very well done, very well written. It's very tasteful. There's given the subject matter it's not it's it's done in a very tasteful way it, unfortunately it's not a very easy thing to swallow but but it's even worse it's, it's based it's, on a true story yeah it's worth giving it to give it a watch oh yeah sound of freedom for me is number two best thing i've seen this year and again i almost just flew under the radar almost did not even give this a shot and that number one for me is one that was on griff's list um you know i just i saw it a little bit later than most people just time work and whatever um, but when I finally saw it, it, it I've I've been a Godzilla fan since I could probably talk. I've <laughs> seen probably every Godzilla movie. It, it, the American ones, uh, the first one, the one with um, Garrett Edwards is is I done I think really well done. I I wish I would have seen more of Godzilla. That's my only gripe about it. This one, it's my number one for many reasons. Number one, Godzilla looks crazy, and he's. The villain it takes place in world war ii japan he's the absolute villain and when she shows that's what i've always even as a kid when i thought of him that's what i always em em envisioned him being just a complete force of nature shows up and wrecks shit and that's yeah. what he does here he's not here to like recover some some egg or to fight some you know mutated he's here to wreck shit and when he shows up that's what he does the visual effects is are stunning. The the sound is crazy. His roar, I think they kept it really original. Uh, he just he looks just 
evil as hell. There's no explanation as to why he <laughs> shows up, which I love because it, it takes me back to, and I've been telling Griffin this, the original Halloween movies where Michael Myers just shows up and just wrecks shit. That's what Godzilla, he, there's no plot here. There's no reasoning behind his, you know, he's just a monster and he's just there to wreck shit. And I love that. And the budget, 15 million, what yeah. these people were able to do with $15 million should Hollywood teach Hollywood notes. a giant, yeah, a, a lot of notes and try to emulate that as opposed to throwing $400 million and coming out with a crappy movie. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, that's why Godzilla number one, minus one is my number one. If you haven't seen it, what the hell are you waiting for? Yeah, go see it. It's amazing. So there's a lot of things that we, Griff and I, we agree early on, we narrow our list down to five. And so there's a lot of things that should have been on here, but just for time and for the length of the list, <laughs> they can be. But I only have one honorable mention that was also one of the best things this year. Guardians of the Galaxy 3. That was a Not good on the movie. list, but it definitely is an honorable mention. For me, it's Sound of Freedom again. Flew completely under the radar. We wouldn't have seen it if it wasn't a viewer request. So thank you again for that. It was it was a great movie, but again, as Edward said, had to make the list a little bit smaller. And now, what you guys are all here for, <laughs> the worst things that came out this year. I don't think any of these are going to be surprised. It surprises. No. I think everyone expects... I think, to be fair, there should have been a lot more. But again, our lists are narrowed down to five. So I think like maybe... originally we had, what, like 15 on these lists before we had yeah. to narrow it down. There's there's a lot of shit that came out. But the good thing year. is there's two of us. So maybe some of the stuff that didn't make it on my list will be on Griff's list. I'll start off at number five. Sadly, The Flash. I can't believe that Gunn said that this was one of the best movies he'd seen and allegedly Tom Cruise praised it so much it just had to be so watched. So many people no. cra- praised it. It was ridiculous. No. It's just one of the many nails in the coffin of the DCEU. Number four, Knights of the Zodiac. What? Seriously? Fuck. Another <laughs> Rui request we had, we watched. Uh, this, this one was... I'm not even going to spend too much time on it. If you haven't seen it, don't even waste your time. So I wouldn't recommend any of these movies or shows that are on the list. Knights of the Zodiac. Seriously. Can't. I I, I just can't. Uh, At number three, uh, Fast X. Seriously, fuck this movie. Fuck this franchise. I I can't. (laughs) I can't with that. Of course, the next one that comes out, we'll be reviewing it mainly for entertainment and for this channel. But other than that, I'm ready for Dom Toretto to time travel because it's going to happen. I'm not surprised. He's gonna die at this, at this at this point. This guy's got the infinity gauntlet. This is complete. I understand suspending our belief for superhero sake. I I can understand that. But this guy started off racing cars as a mechanic. Now he fucking goes to outer space and they fight uh submarine. I just I can't Where's the Godzilla Fast and Furious crossover? <sighs> Honestly, Where's... they could do a lot of Fast and Furious crossovers and probably make a bunch of money with other franchises. I just wanted to die. I desperately <laughs> it's wanted never to never going just to die. End. As long as Dom, uh... as long as uh, Vin Diesel owns it, it's never ending. Yeah, get ready for the the female spinoff version of this shit. Uh... Starring, starring Vin Diesel, of course. Next one on my list is the Marvels. Now, I was hoping this movie was going to do well because I I think Brie Larson's great. Um, my lover. I think she's very attractive. Yes, but I also think she's she's a fairly solid actress. Um, she's got the awards to prove so. But this movie, this fucking thing, is a train wreck from beginning to end. There is no saving it. That musical number, as Griff and I have spoken about, it. There's no wonder Kevin Feige was like, "Well, let's let's just redo Daredevil: Born Again." Seriously, recalibrate, guys, because this this kind of crap can't do this in 2024. Uh, the worst thing I've seen this year, and I can't believe I'm saying this, because I do like the director, is Rebel Moon. Fuck this movie. I, this is I've I. It's been years since I've had to, you know, pause a movie. And 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 go to bed. Just that that's how bad this was. I know that there's a lot of Zach bros out there who are going to defend him no no matter what. You can't defend the indefendable. This shit was completely boring. It was a fucking waste of time. It, it, and he keeps defending it by saying, well, it's my version of Star Wars. Well, I, I'll just watch Star Wars instead of this shit ever again. Yeah, it's, it, was, it was real bad. I'll get into it in a minute. My worst, surprisingly, 
three out of the five movies and shows on my list are all superheroes, which is really disappointing for me. But at number five is Secret Invasion. I was really into the show at the beginning, but the ending was just bad. Bad CGI, bad writing, bad character development. It was just a bad show. And it's it really didn't go anywhere, which is really that disappointing. Show suck ass. And they did Maria Hill wrong, so Yeah. And then to no one's surprise, the Marvels is at number four for every reason Edward has said. Marvel needs to get their shit together with the writing because this is this is not okay. No, it's fucking horrible. They're just trying to check boxes for some of these projects and not making good movies. It's it's an issue, but hopefully they fix it. Number three, again, to no one's surprise, is The Flash. It was a terrible movie, and it's one of my favorite comic book characters of all time, which made it even worse. I've been waiting for this movie for the past 10 years because it's been announced and then delayed and delayed and delayed, and it was awful. It was bad CGI. Writing was terrible. Horrible CGI. The actor defended the CGI, said it's on purpose. It's purposefully bad, which, again, this makes no, no fucking sense. sense. Just accept that you've made a bad movie. That that's not a bad thing you can always improve it's just admit sometimes when you make a mistake totally yeah. fine rebel moon is number two as edward said we we both almost fell asleep during this movie if that doesn't say enough i don't know what will it's it's a failed star wars pitch and it's it's very bad we sadly have to watch part two and then there's a director's cut coming out this year that's like four hours long and that will also be crap because it'll just be two hours longer of nothing. Number one, which is actually not on Edward's list, is Napoleon. It yeah, did this, suck ass. This movie was, was really bad, but I think just what made it even worse is just the historical inaccuracies to the point where it like broke character. The dialogue was awful. Again, that awful boats line. It was just it was just such a poorly made movie. It was bad casting. It's not, not the fault of Joaquin Phoenix just he he shouldn't have been cast to play Napoleon. It's don't watch it. Don't watch any of the movies on this list. You don't even need to watch them to keep up with the current MCU or anything. Just just avoid it altogether. It's, and if you have seen them, we're sorry. Yeah, we we can't give you that time back, but we can at least hopefully prevent you from watching other crap in 2024. <sighs> I'm I'm glad 2023 is over. There's there's been a lot of bad movies, few really really good ones, but mostly we just haven't gotten anything too worthwhile, and probably just because Hollywood's running out of ideas. The number of blockbuster movies that are coming out next year that are original and new IPs is only two that have currently been announced out of the entire year. It's just only two of them. That's that's kind of ridiculous. I am really looking forward to this this year in general. I can't. Um, I have three projects. Well, there's a lot of projects, but some of those, the dates haven't been confirmed. But there's three that I'm really, really looking forward to that I almost know I won't be let down by. One of them is Echo. The other one is Deadpool 3. And the other one is uh, Dune 2. And that's only because it got pushed to this year. So if not, yeah. I would have would have talked about it last year. But um, that's it's, it for me. It's pretty similar for me. I'm excited for the second half of Invincible Season 2. Deadpool 3, the X-Men 97, hopefully is going to be good. But there's, I don't know, there's not much coming out. Just a lot of sequels for a lot of franchises that some of them are deserved. Like Sonic 3, yeah, that's that we knew that was going to happen. But a Mufasa prequel, we, we don't need that. We don't need a prequel to Lion King, especially when it's, quote, live action. It's just the CGI animals, but we really, we don't need that. There's just a lot of things we don't need that just they're just pumping out. We'll be there for every single one of them. Well, thanks so much, guys, for you know coming on this ride with Griffin and I. We we really enjoy every moment. Absolutely. Of it. Uh, we love even if we you guys hate the movie, it's fun. Yeah, because at least we get to shoot the shit for a little while and just talk. Yeah. So thanks for all of you that like the content and subscribe and do us the favor of leaving us your your comments. We absolutely love reading them. We love checking that out. We love doing this for you guys. And, you know, for those of you guys that don't like the content, that's no problem. You know, not not everything is for everyone. If you don't like it, door opens both ways. If you do like it, like and subscribe. We'll be here all of 2024 looking really forward to what's coming, giving you guys more of our opinions. Of course, let us know what you guys' top five and worst five are. Thank you again. You guys are amazing. You guys are the reason we do this. 
2023 is over. Thank God. Good luck in 2024. We'll be here, guys.